Hello everybody, welcome back to the Montana State Dynasty on NCAA Football 06. This video is going to be the year one recap here. We're going to look at these stats. Troy Anderson played a majority of the quarterback, 13 touchdowns. 15 interceptions a little high, but still better than Rovig's two touchdowns to 10 interceptions. Casey Bunham all, uh, also started one game. He played a little bit. He was all right. If Fonze, 915 yards on the ground along with nine rushing touchdowns. Anderson, 837 yards, seven touchdowns. Logan Jones, 186 and three rushing touchdowns. He probably didn't get as many carries as he should have. Uh, I, I kind of want to go with a dual running back with him and Afonze. I went more with Afonze. Receiving-wise, Travis Johnson and Kevin Cassis, both over 600 yards, 8 touchdowns for Johnson, 3 for Cassis. McCutcheon, uh, he was solid this year too, along with Coy Steele. Mitch Brott, he did give up 9 sacks on the year, but only 3 players gave up sacks here, and I think a big part of that had to do with Anderson running around and avoiding people in the backfield there. We had a lot of TFLs, and Derek Marks, he had himself 13 sacks. Bryce Sterk had five, Scrimples with four. Williams had two, and then Hill, Benson, and Prince Jr. all had one. Braden Conkle, he led the team with four INTs. Jacquey Allen had two, as did Washington. Then Hardly and uh, Hill, they each had themselves one. And uh, Conkle... He also uh, had four forced fumbles. He was doing a great job of ripping the ball out. Scrum post and Marks also had a forced fumble. Uh, but we were only able to recover three of them. Also on defense, Damian Washington got us a pick six. Kicking this year was not good. One for 13 for Tristan Bailey. And really none of it was his fault. It was mostly me. I'm just not good at kicking in this game. It's way different than like in Madden 07 where it's the right stick that you push it up and down. In this game, you have to click X at the right time, and it's just difficult. Nate Dunley, the Florida State running back, he won himself the Heisman Trophy this year. So congratulations to him. 1,400 rushing yards and 19 touchdowns, along with about 500 receiving yards. Montana's coach, he ends up winning the Best Coach Award, so I guess congratulations to him. And then looking at the All-Americans, Alan Bright of Sacramento State actually made the uh, the team here. And look at second team, Conkle and Logan Jones made it. And I'm pretty sure the only reason Logan Jones made it was because of his return yards. I'm pretty sure it's counting that. We also had Travis Johnson, Mitch Brott made it here on the second team when it comes to all uh, big sky. And now looking at the bowl games, we're just going to be looking at the ones in our conference here. Idaho State fell, Idaho fell, and Montana. So everyone in the Big Sky who made it to a bowl game here lost. Now we're going to be taking you to the Rose Bowl slash National Championship game. Uh, based on what I saw, this basically doubled down as both. Uh, I also stated at the beginning of this series, I'm kind of a college football dummy. Uh, and here at the end of the uh, at the end of year one. Uh, that is still true, um, but uh, I understand that the Rose Bowl is big, is a big thing, and I believe here in this season it counted as the uh, the championship game as well. Although I don't think that's normally the case. You can guys can correct me in the comments if I'm way off with that. But the two teams facing off here are Idaho and Florida. Idaho is going to start off with the football. They have yet to lose a game this season. Florida has only lost one game, but their hill comes down with the sack. Madison is looking to pass. Here he's got his man over the middle. That's going to pick up a nice gain. Third down and five. Madison, one of the best quarterbacks in the country there, throwing a great catch in the end zone. And Iowa is off to a quick start there, driving downfield and finishing this drive with a 19-yard touchdown pass there. A great catch by his receiver, jumping up, grabbing it, holding on to it. And they're going to take the early lead. Third down and seven here for Florida. Eric Hawk throwing this one to the left side, tipped, and it's going to be intercepted. Aya with, with the football again, and they're going to set up in Gator territory. Man, you cannot start off much better than that. Driving downfield, getting the touchdown, and then getting the ball right back already in field goal range. That pass there falls incomplete on third down. Fourth down, they are in long field range. They're going to go for it on fourth down and ten, and it's going to be picked off. 
Florida probably would have been better off. They would have been better off just swatting that to the ground, but that can pat the stats. At least an interception looks better even if you get worse field position. Eric Hawk is looking to pass on second down and 13 here. Going for it all. A great catch. And Florida's down to the 15-yard line. A big-time connection there as they're trying to bounce back off of that interception on the last drive. Look at this replay here. He, it was just some tight coverage and whatnot. He was still able to come down with it. Nearing the end of the first quarter, Eric Hawk, he's going to the end zone here. It's going to fall incomplete. And I think they're going to attempt a field goal. Indeed, they will here at the beginning of the second quarter. The kick is up. It is good. And Florida is on the board. Iowa's going to come out throwing here. A first down and more out to the 40-yard line. A good play there for them. But now they are faced with a third down and 10 situation. It's tipped and it's going to be picked off. Is anyone going to catch him? It does not look like it. This is going to go down as a pick six. Wowzers, look at that. Florida coming up clutch with the pick six there. Looking at this replay. It, it got tipped up into the air right into the hands of the DB. And nobody was going to catch him. And Florida is going to take the lead now. We're going to pick up here second down for, what are they, the Hawks? I think they're the Hawks. The Iowa Hawks, that sounds right. I'm probably wrong. Uh, but a uh, nice play there for them. Second down and 10. Madison's looking to pass. He's under some pressure, and he's going to be sacked on that play by Hill. Third down and 17. Madison throwing this one there. It's going to fall incomplete, though. They're going to have to punt again. Nearing halftime now, Florida has the lead, and they're trying to extend it there, and this is going to help. 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Florida Gators. It's going to be a 10-point lead now after that 68-yard receiving touchdown. He got just enough behind the defense, burnt everyone, got into the end zone, and uh, yeah, they got a good 10-point lead now, and they force a stop on, the, uh, on Iowa here. On the punt return now, working down the left sideline. Is anybody going to catch him? Once again, no one's going to catch him. And that's going to go down as yet another touchdown, a 66-yard return. Under a minute left to go in this first half, and Nate Madison is going to be intercepted. My goodness, they have fallen apart fast. They had a good start to this game. But I've just given up touchdown after touchdown, and I believe that's his second interception thrown today. The Gators are trying to capitalize on this. Eric Hawk is looking to throw. He's got time in the pocket. Going underneath there to his man, who's able to turn it upfield and take it into the end zone. Holy cow, it's 31-7. to Eric Hawk just had all day in the pocket. Went underneath to his man. He quickly turned it upfield, got into the end zone for the touchdown. Another punt here from Iowa. Are we going to see another return here? No, rather he muffs the football and Iowa's going to wind up recovering this one. Can they do anything with the remaining five seconds left on the clock now? Madison under pressure and no, they're not going to get any points off the turnover as he is sacked there. And that's going to wind up taking us to halftime here with the Florida Gators are currently leading 31-7. Yes, they are the Hawkeyes, so I was close on that one. Third down and three. They're going to give this to the running back, and did he pick up the first down? I'm not sure if he did. I mean, I don't think he did. I think he went backwards on his own uh, power there and whatnot, and they're going to have to punt. Third down and 11 for the Hawkeyes. That pass is going to fall incomplete. So back and forth we go now with some three and outs. Florida, despite their big lead, is 0 for 3 on third down conversions. Hawk is looking to change that, though, on this play, and it's going to be caught in the end zone for the touchdown. Man, that's like his second or third big-time connection there. Uh, I think that's his third passing touchdown, and the Gators, they're just absolutely rolling right now after the tough start. In the third quarter here, late into the third quarter, his pass is going to be picked off yet again. He wound up throwing that directly to the defender. Another turnover here. Third down and 10 now for the Gators. Eric Cox got time in the pocket, but that time runs out as he winds up getting sacked. 
So they're going to come out for a field goal attempt. The kick is up. It is good. Florida extends their lead. And now after getting a stop, they wind up in field goal range yet again to kick yet another field goal. Just salt in the wound. Here are your players of the game. Look at that. Five sacks for Mr. Hill on Florida. He had himself a heck of a game. Just all around a good game for Florida. Iowa fans, they're they're out of here, man. They they don't like this. They they thought that it was it was a good start for them. It really was a touchdown, and then forcing that interception. But then when they went for that fourth down and ten, after that, really things just started going downhill. The turnovers, their defense couldn't really get a stop. Um, they, Florida scored all around. They scored on defense, on offense, and on special teams. So uh, looking at this now, I get this notification. Uh, I guess we get 10 less scholarships for last for the next two years, rather, because we did not discipline our players well enough. I, I think that's what this is saying here. Um, so I guess that's unfortunate. Got to maybe do better at disciplining our players and whatnot. That's going to wrap up this video, though. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a moist rest of your day. And until next time, this has been Jeffrey. Goodbye.